Often she records these testimonies electronically, but sometimes she chooses to transcribe them in colloquial dialect, which she feels is fresher than modern standard Arabic. At times also she uses one particular interview to stand in for or represent a range of similar voices. In the face of exhaustion, of fears for her daughter, powerless and dependent upon Xanax and nicotine, she is conscious of the need for an evidence base to serve a future purpose beyond the immediate. Like Suef, she is writing in and of the present for the future. Often she says, that's how things are in this country. It's a message to the future. Unheroic, she says she's stumbling like a cartoon character wherever I walked. She nevertheless is motivated by the urgency of the situation to continue roaming the streets, nervous, out of breath, frightened, biting my fingers. So bounded by anxiety and fear, she sort of domesticates the horror by the frequent referencing of her adolescent child who feels abandoned and in constant need of assurance. At one juncture, Yazbek asked, what kind of dialogue is supposed to take place between an artillery turret and an unarmed house? Which, apart from referring to the temptations of dialogue offered by the regime, also puts into perspective the scale and distance between herself and her struggle and the contextual power differential now that she is a rogue Alawite. So although unable to write at times, because of the enormity of the events. She's also on occasions able to stand back from the immediate, to pause, reflect upon the situation and speculate. The negative side of this is a feeling of almost autistic detachment from herself, as though she is just an idea. I drink my coffee and believe that I'm only thinking about a woman I'll write about one day. I'm a novel. I'll write about it all one day if I manage to survive. So in a climate of distrust, suspicion and terror, that's not just a piece of idle rhetoric because no longer publishing articles, no longer a presence on Facebook, she threatened that if she keeps on writing, she will be disappeared. Once when she's detained, she's taken to see some prison cells and some grim sights she sees. And she's told by one of the officers, this is just a short trip to make you write better. And hence she becomes aware that it's only her interview testimonies which will enable her to break out of her silence one day. So feminist, activist, writer, mother, daughter, and now exile. Samar Yazbek chronicles stories of heroism that will be told for generation. It's her response to the question I posed earlier about the duty of the writer. In keeping the narrative alive, she produced a document not just of the past, but for the future, what she calls, I'm writing Assyria for tomorrow. Yazbek and other writers often speak of silence. And another Syrian writer, Khaled Khalifa, expresses similar thoughts in an interview entitled In Quest of a Lost Syrian Identity. He's the author of In Praise of Hatred, which was recently translated into English. It's based around the life of a young Islamist woman in Aleppo, at odds with most of her family, and torn by inner conflicts of faith and her burgeoning sexuality. She's active in the Muslim Brotherhood struggle with the regime in the late 1970s, early 1980s. Deeply sectarian, nurtured on hatred, she is imprisoned in brutal and humiliating conditions for eight years. And she comes to recognize that an enemy is someone whose story you have not yet heard. And she gradually crosses lines once rigidly adhered to. It's a complex narrative which charts the excesses of the regime of Bashar Assad's father Hafez. And inevitably it's been seen as prophetic and predictive of the current revolution, something which Khalifa rejects. Nevertheless, its presentness and current saliency has meant that it's widely read and referred to. And I'm sure it enabled its translation into English in August. 
He says he thought he was returning to a wound that had become old enough to be converted into a tail. That point I mentioned earlier about how long does it take before you can actually distill and process so-called real events into fiction. 